<sighs> well, these are the wonderful guys from the RNLI. Pan, 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 pan. This is sailing yacht, salty lass, salty lass. We are 100 metres south of Bomaris Pier. We are taking water aboard. We require immediate assistance. Being weatherbound in Conway, we were happy to make sail toward the Menai Strait. The weather was pleasant and we were enjoying our freedom of being at sea. We're out under sail again and um, we're going across Conway Bay toward Puffin Island so we can go down into the Menai Strait and it's a lovely evening as you can see. Um, the solar panels are doing their thing up there, they seem happy enough. Um, Annie is steering the boat and over behind us we have uh, the Great Orm and it looks absolutely stunning in the sunset. Gainer's downstairs making a cup of tea lovely and um well what more is there to do than just enjoy the evening we were approaching an area of drying sands on a falling tide with the wind on our nose so we went over to engine and dropped the sails mm. after passing the sandbanks we continued under motor as the channel was quite narrow and the wind was dead ahead we were passing into an area that required some caution we had sandbanks to port and a large unlit mooring field to starboard. It was completely dark and we could see the red boys so we stayed close to them because we could not see any of the moorings or the boats attached to them. I went below to get torches and realised I was breathing fumes. I looked into the engine space, slammed it shut and ran up the stairs and grabbed the radio. Yeah, so uh, Bev's just having a look at it and uh, yes, that could only go star is for us. Oh, so... As you can see, you can just Bev's just a little bit fuzzy. Oh, golly. I don't know if you can see this, but our bilge pump is not working again. Uh, because um, uh, we've got water coming from this engine. As you can see, here's the water in the engine. And uh, we've also got smoke. It's not very much smoke, but we have got smoke. Um, and um, what's up, Beverly? It appears to be the exhaust elbow. Uh, and we were just saying to each other that we need to get somebody to come and look at our exhaust elbow down here. And oh, golly, basically, um, we've got something wrong from the exhaust elbow. Yeah. Mishaps, you name it. Everything happens That's, on salty last. It wasn't that, it's not overly hot. It must have been something out the It must have been that going. going. But basically, I don't know if you can see it, it's got like a, um, you, can, you can feel, you can see it in the um, camera, it's got um, a slight smoke uh, because the engine is basically too warm. And uh, that's actually for us. Yes, the RNLI are on our boat again. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, the water is going down. Yeah. I'm just adding some more light. I don't think you, do you need any more light down there, or are you okay? Right, he's okay. But uh, he's just having a look at our exhaust style bow. Right, okay, so um, this is the uh, exhaust elbow. And um, we had been looking at her, uh, thinking of getting it replaced, but we just didn't. Oh, anyway, um, I'm going to make sure that the sea cock is closed. That way, no more water is coming into the boat. Um, 
so um, I've built done as much as I can with the manual, uh, with the automatic. I'm now going to do the manual. Okay, and we've just identified another problem um, in that, um, as you can see here, um, the air filter. But I suspect what was happening there was just people were coming in. Um, they were just putting their hands at various places and uh, rather than being uh, cautious in around that uh, piece of equipment um, we're not really complaining though are we no we're not complaining because we're safe uh, we're on a mooring um, but we've got that to fix do you want me to give you another problem that's up? Uh, and we've also got um, uh, the elbow to fix and apparently Beverly's got another problem so let's go find out what that is Okay, so what's the other problem, Beverly? The manual bilge pump, which is at the stern of the boat, um, just the age, I suspect. The rubber, when I've been pumping it out, I've worn through the rubber diaphragm. I think it's just brittle. So that needs replaced. Okay, so... Add it to the list. Just add it to the list. And uh, we had a pony oh, just escaped from uh, Conway, and now it looks like we're going to be here for a bit. Ah, give us a smile! Hey, See you lads! See you tomorrow! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Oh, golly! Uh, <sighs> and uh, while Beverly's up on deck, I'm now, because we've got the water below the level that the bilge pump can deal with, so now I am on the sponge and bucket stage! <sighs> Well, <laughs> there's some good and bad of being constantly in trouble. Oh, basically, when Beverly, because I was on the helm, when Beverly told me that um, we had engine trouble um, and we had a, a leak in the engine, immediately I turned round. I said, we're, we're right next to a mooring field. Let's get on a mooring. Just get me to a mooring. So, you know, so Beverly was looking for moorings. But, although this is not good, you know, that we've gone through this, but we just knew what we were doing. You know, what was, what was going to, wh where we were going, what was going to happen. And, okay, fair enough, you know, we're on a mooring, we're in um, Beaumaris. Um, we haven't got the name of an engineer that we hopefully can sort it all out. Um, we've got two issues that we've found, um, like uh, the air filter was knackered. And, of course, Bev's going, oh, Bev's just doing a change, I say that's happening. Oh, for honest to goodness, it's just <sighs> crazy adventures. Oh, yeah, that's also all right. Well, um, we've got UK Clag at the moment um, on this mooring. Um, basically, just low level cloud. Uh, but even with the low level cloud, we're still bringing in between 40 and 60 watts of power. And it's a good thing we are bringing in power because we fitted them, the solar panels, yesterday. And now we're having to use them in anger because <laughs> we're on the mooring. <laughs> the situation that we got in last night. So we really are using the solar panels in anger. <laughs> It's got to be a real life test, doesn't it, Bev? And it is. Okie dokie. So uh, last night it was pretty black. Um, I'm just going to press no on that one. Anyway, uh, it was pretty black. Um, but um, I was on the helm and Beverly, before the incident even happened, Beverly knew that there was something not right with the engine. Uh, she could smell a smell. Um and um we'd already um i said to beverly i'd said well we can always go into Beaumaris. um but she said no we'll go on we'll go to the moorings that we want to go to 
um, so I was going down the channel uh, but then Beverly said no you know there's water coming out here so I did no more than do and I went back to Beaumaris but I'll just show you just how far you had to go back this is us going down the track we'd just gone past Beaumaris um, I just turned round and then I headed towards the mooring, mooring field because I knew it was here and um, you know as soon as we identified a mooring we just got onto it yeah and we're actually in the channel here uh, just on the edge of it uh, and as you can see just if you look to the north there again are the small craft moorings marked yeah there's a small craft but that's because they're dried but these are the larger craft moorings and as you can see we're currently in uh 13.2 meters of depth and we have a six meter tide around here so that means we'll go down to seven go down to seven so we'll be fine on that um and this is our rather nice mooring field yeah but you can see there's the red marker in the channel that is about 200 meters away the channel runs <clears throat> just off the stern of the boat and you can see that the mooring field starts just there just runs all the way around and we had to dodge all these boats here in the dark coming into the mirroring field but we did it yeah my biggest problem was I had to keep very close to the reds um, uh, during the night passage because I knew there was a mooring field on the um, left hand side but not a single one had got the light on <clears throat> so I had no idea where the boats were uh, Beverly was uh, out with the torch just identifying um, uh, boats to me so that I uh, but I kept just over to the reds that's all I did okay so on our checklist we have um, some of the things we have are uh, make sure that the gas is turned off uh, another one is check through holes and we always close the through holes and uh, another item on the checklist is check mooring lines now obviously when we're in a pontoon we check those but today we're on a mooring so let's do check the mooring lines I must admit I did go a bit crazy with them last night because we were tired and a bit shell-shocked <laughs> yeah so Beverly has got the chain on and then I've got a nylon snubber line and a polyester line um, as, as a backup so we've got two backups to, but the chain that we have is actually quite loose there's no tension on it because as you can see down there I have a rolling hitch on the chain and on this side I have a stainless steel shackle on the chain with a nylon line on it to give some stretch when we were uh, last here at Beaumaris um, one of our followers said you shouldn't be on that um, mooring because it's got stainless steel chain but we'll be glad to see that this one doesn't <laughs> so the only thing we're going to do is put a fender down just to protect the anchor in the front of the boat yeah. 